The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when that time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to you all, keep awake for the gospel of the Lord. Christmas is coming, the church is glad to see. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, your Son has set us over his household to take care of it and to wait for his coming in glory. 
Keep us alert and help us to overcome our carelessness. Enable us to wait in joyful hope for the coming of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. I can imagine that each one of us can remember what happened when we were students back in the days and the teacher announced that she was going to step out of class for a minute. I'm sure you can remember the words like, Now class, I'm going down the hall to the office, and while I'm gone, I'm going to trust each one of you to act like ladies and gentlemen. Each one of you have work to do. I am going now, and I'll be right back. I'm sure you can remember what happened after she closed the door. When the teacher's away, there's a test. A test that many people flunk. In my school days, I remember vividly that all hell will break, will break loose. Some kids worked or tried to work, while other kids made spitballs paper aeroplanes, and other missiles. Others wandered around aimlessly around between deaths, talking to one another, poking each other, and so it goes on. Sometimes the whole affair was organized. One or two would stand near the door, listening for the teacher's return, while their buddies ran amok, write notes on, on the blackboard, or or did something to one of the teacher's books. Occasionally someone would shout, Watch out! Teacher's coming! Just to test the reaction. This would result in roars of laughter and giggling. My friends, right now the teacher is away. We are living between times. In the times between Christ's coming as the babe in the manger and his second coming as the Lord and Judge. We are also given alert calls like the Gospel has for us today. Watch it. Keep watch. Be alert. Be awake. We live between beginnings. And the question that the Gospel poses to us today, while we are in this state, is, some, is quite simple. Are we going to pass the test set for us by our teacher's absence? Or are we going to flunk that test, like many of us did in the past, when we were at school? What are we going to do while we are still waiting on the coming of our Lord? The prophet Isaiah laments their situation before God and says, You are our Father, Lord. We are like clay, and you are like the potter. You created us so. So do not be too angry with us, or hold our sins against us forever. We are your people. Be merciful to us. Your sacred cities are like a desert. Jerusalem is a deserted ruin and our temple, the sacred and beautiful place where our ancestors praised you, has been destroyed. Lord, are you unmoved by this? Are you going to do nothing about this and make us suffer more than we can ever endure? Is this not also our cry? As we ask today, Lord, are you going to do nothing about our situation here with the COVID-19 pandemic, killing so many people across the world? Are you going to do nothing? Differently, our visions of the future are born out of sufferings of the present. And our hope for others out of our own despair. What is our vision of the future? 
Is it blurred by COVID-19? Jesus always speaks about hope. This hope is not based on the chance that things will get better or worse. This hope is built upon the promise that wherever, whatever happens, God stays with us at all times, in all places. God is the God of life. As his followers, we are called to be a people of hope and to build communities of hope in a world where the options are usually confined to a limited hopelessness or on an unlimited negativity. In order to do this, we must enter the tomb from which Jesus speaks to us about hope. And I want to enter with you in that tomb. That means that we have to honestly face the despair we are dealing with in the world today. Honestly dealing with the situation of the pandemic. Honestly dealing with the situation of ice and drugs. Honestly dealing with the situation of the abuse of women and children. And honestly dealing with a situation of hardship that's a confronting our community. We find ourselves in desperate times. And we cannot go around despair to hope. We have to go through despair. We will never know what hope is until we have faced it. Real despair. God is saying to you and I today, if you are going to do nothing about it yourselves, then I will do nothing either. With us, God will do it. Without God, without us, God will not. As we, without God, we are reminded that as Christians, we are the body of Christ in the world, and we must reflect Christ at all times. Christ has no hands, no feet, no mouth, no eyes, no ears, no heart here on earth. We are his body. We must become his hands, his feet, his mouth, his ears, his eyes, and his heart. Many will have difficulties at them because of their failures, their pain, their addiction, their unemployment, their bereavement, and their loss of home. And as they cry out to God, we as the body of Christ need to respond to this. And so how prepared are we to do this? Have we done any preparation to be Christ for others. It is when we walk in the light that we bring hope, peace, love and joy to others. It's then that we help others to walk in the light of faith also. St. Paul reminds you and I today, God is to be trusted. The God who calls you and I to have fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ. Let us look at life this way. Thank God for giving us this life on this earth, in this country, in this place. And let us start by seeing God in all things and in all. Our thinking does not change our living. But it's our living that change our thinking. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ is coming. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Show up.
us your mercy, Lord. Show us your love. Grant us salvation, Lord. Show us your love. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ is coming. Alleluia, alleluia. 